how, how easy will it be for a new user to exchange their currency to get to get into coin etc well yeah so another thing is that we uh, we have the um, uh, infrastructure for fiat currencies so we would how many exchanges are doing that right now well i think barely any 10 maybe yeah. something like that yeah eight or ten out maybe. of the whole um bunch of exchanges and, and why is that because it was for me when i was getting into crypto it was one of the most frustrating things ever is there were only a few exchanges and by the way the ones that offered a fiat gateway a lot of them they had to close as well because they were yeah. there was too much demand so there, there are a few things uh, say first of all there is a general trend in banking uh, sector towards um, um, strengthening the aml and the compliance this general trend so it's not just uh, about crypto. So mm -hmm. every bank uh, now uh, gets more and more um, stringent to the source of funds uh, and compliance aspects. Mm -hmm. So that's one, one thing. Another thing that obviously in the beginning of crypto, so there was uh, like the stance from the central banks and regulators that crypto is, is sort of uh, bad because it's used massively for different illicit activities and stuff like that. Uh, we can talk a bit about that uh, separately because it's quite an interesting uh, mm -hmm. discussion. And, uh, and therefore, uh, in like a few years ago, it was extremely difficult to open a bank account, even if you're like in blockchain business, not just crypto. But the things are changing now uh, towards the better. So there are a few banks in, uh, in worldwide um, which, which accept the, the crypto companies, but the requirements are very, very, very strict. So in order to satisfy these requirements, you have to basically uh, provide lots of information and you have to, um, to, 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 to tick lots of boxes uh, with, with them. Mm -hmm. So in particular, so the boxes are how you uh, get the, your investments, uh, how, you, how you fund it. Mm -hmm. That's the first question. Say, what type of crypto cryptocurrencies do you accept on your exchange? So do you check the source of these cryptocurrencies? Uh, how do you do KYC? How do you do ML on your users? Everything. So, uh, and if you're able to, to, to tick all these boxes, then you can get this, this, uh, uh, this yeah, relationship. But it's very, very difficult. And the KYC and AML, just for the, the folk watching this who aren't too sure what that really means, the KYC know your customer, what does that entail? Why is this check such a key check that well, I can say so every bank, every every licensed financial institution has to make sure that uh, basically the uh, uh, the person who opens the account is is this person. Mm. So you need to have the, so that there are some standards of how you do that. And obviously, uh, as an online exchange, so you don't meet your your client face to face. So you onboard your client remotely. Mm -hmm. And so you have to use uh, certain techniques, how you can make sure that, that this person is, is this person. So as a minimal, uh, so you have to collect the ID and you have to collect the proof address, which most of the exchanges do at the moment, mm -hmm. but that's not actually enough. Right. So, so you need to do uh, also the source of wealth, source of funds check. And is that where the AML comes in, is checking yes. the source of funds? Yes. And okay. this is what basically most of the exchanges don't do. Wow. So uh, those funds can be coming from yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so the mafia. You, uh, if you look at, at, at any even like very reputable exchange, even this fiat connection, mm -hmm. so, you can, um, so there are normally tiers of, of the account. And the tiers limit uh, uh, what, what amount you can actually withdraw. Mm -hmm. But that's totally incorrect because what you have to do is you have to actually limit the amount you, have, you can deposit to the exchange, not withdraw, because, because that's where source of wealth and source of funds check uh, comes into play. So because, because basically if you say, okay, so tier, tier two at, at the reputable exchange, so you can deposit and withdraw the cryptocurrency without the limitation. Uh, so most exchanges that, now are, are, are preventing the withdrawal side, but not checking the deposit side. Yes. Yeah, and for instance, uh, one, 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 one of the, uh, of the biggest exchange, mm. so the, the limit for withdrawal is like 200 grand a month mm. in crypto. Well, okay, and, the, and there's no limit on deposit. So this exchange can be used, as you can imagine, as a money laundering facility. Right. Basically, if a drug dealer 
uh, just pays to 20 people uh, to deposit his uh, his cryptos into mm. the exchange and then everyone can can withdraw up to 200 grand a month and it's a perfect money laundering uh, scheme right and obviously the banks uh, which will be getting this 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 fiat withdrawals they will probably raise the flag but but it it will be the exchange which facilitates the the scheme right I've never even thought of this yeah uh, this money laundering <laughs> aspect for deposits and withdrawals and so you've had to show as part of getting a proof yeah. as a fiat gateway that you've got safeguards in place in place on for crypto deposits for actually, crypto deposits because yeah. yeah. for fiat obviously the bank so if if, if, the, uh, right, if somebody has the bank account mm -hmm. then the bank will check this right 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 so we, we just need to check that the money comes from uh, mm -hmm. from the bank account which belongs to the the user we have to the to the same person we have on file so just to which actually no, uh, no not all exchanges do this as well really so you can uh, potentially deposit from the uh, third party account mm -hmm. so i'm not sure uh, uh, so setting some of the exchanges they don't check this so this is important so we check that the money the fiat money comes from the uh, same person but it's relatively easy to do mm -hmm. there have some nuances there but uh, you know but it's relatively easy to do but the most important part is to check the, the crypto and uh, and then yeah, so you have to check. Uh, so basically, you have to ask uh, the person where where they they took this this script from, mm -hmm. and then we give some options. So, if, for instance, uh, so we can do some blockchain analysis, and that's basically what. As an interesting, as as I said, so the illicit use of bitcoins and cryptos is an interesting topic by itself because it's all these people who actually once once the bitcoin. Uh, became a sort of uh, uh, known thing, so a lot of people started to use it as as, as basically uh, mean for illicit activities. But they don't understand that actually Bitcoin has uh, absolutely um, unrivaled capabilities of transparency because you have to you can look at blockchain and you can trace every single coin up to the uh, up to the origin. <laughs> and actually, it's very easy to track all these illicit activities in blockchain so these people just don't realize that because they are sort of they think it's sort of anonymous it is but uh, but you can trace and we can use this you can use this for for an email check as well so for instance there is there are databases of uh, like wallets associated with uh, um, Silk Road and then mm -hmm. what have you the darknet so you can basically raise the flag if, if you see the incoming transactions uh, coming uh, and the the uh, this UTXOs and the, the tokens inside this transaction uh, touched this this wallet some 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 time ago, and same way we can check that for instance if a person has bought the bitcoins at hundred dollars uh, like um, uh, four or five years ago, and we can allow and 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 these bitcoins stayed there for for this time we can see this and we can allow them to deposit more. Because basically uh, there is a limit, like which is uh, normally like ten thousand uh, dollars size of deposit, and everything about that has to be checked. So there are a lot of misconceptions out there about an anonymity on. Uh... Yeah, so there are many, many, many things which which you which you need to have in in place when wow. you're basically doing this source of false check, and if you do it properly, then you basically uh, you can you can be connected to fiat world. So that's that's the, the bottom line. So so a really good filter. What I'm learning here is that a really good filter. If you want to know whether an exchange is reputable, stage one, does it have a fiat gateway? Because there's a lot you have to go through to be able to have a fiat gateway. Yeah. So that's filter one. What's filter two? What's Hi, it's Sean here from the Crypto Wizards YouTube channel. What you've just seen is a snippet of a much longer interview of what it takes behind the scenes to start a cryptocurrency exchange, which is awesome stuff because you won't find this content or information anywhere else online. So there's some really good stuff here you don't wanna miss out on. If you are interested in following this journey, if you are interested in algorithmic trading, or you are interested in what it takes to set up fiat gateways, etc., or just wanna follow Nick and Dimitri in general as thought leaders in the space, then make sure you find the playlist, Crypto Exchange, The Crick's Journey here on the Crypto Wizards channel. And we'll see you in the next video.